Gravity is the dominant force in the universe. This tenant of Einstein's was irrefutable. In 1939, Einstein discussed what happened when um, a large amount of matter was concentrated in a small region. Einstein wondered, could its gravitational collapse crush its vast quantities of matter into the tiniest of points? In early 1964, Gelman proposes to the world the existence of three new fundamental entities he calls quarks. They're more like little planetary systems. All the positive charge and virtually all the mass is concentrated in a tiny nucleus. Then the surprise jumped at CERN. Quarks not only form individual particles, but they mass together in big lumps, joined by their strong force, 100 times more powerful than our electroweak matter, in which they feed. The 1984 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for experiments that confirmed the first of these new theories. And in the packed CERN main lecture theater in 1983, Carlo Rubia, following on from the work of Abdus Salam and his colleagues, announced the discovery of the carriers of the weak force. What we are really doing here, we are making little banks. We are concentrating uh, in a very small volume of space for a very short period of time, enough energy density so that we can uh, revive or re, uh, replace, so to speak, on a very modest scale, what was really the state of, uh, of, of affairs of the universe as a whole. To make black holes at the so-called black hole factory, it will be an easy task. All it takes is to put together the fractal parts of the black hole, the fastest, most attractive quarks, top quarks, made by accelerating at light speeds our slower masses. Yet, since light is the limit of linear speed, when particles reach that limit, they curl into mass vortices, creating heavy quarks. Then, 10,000 quarks locked by their strong force become an irresistible whirl of attraction or mass bomb. Since the nuclear company will produce one million quarks per second, it will certainly form a quark star. We'll use a battering ram nearly 2,000 times more massive than the old electron and positron. Responding to a massive electrical kick, the proton having an electrical charge begins to accelerate. Moving in the opposite direction are other protons traveling in an adjacent tube. By the time has been accelerated by a linear accelerator, gained energy circulating around two synchrotrons and been injected into the Large Hadron Collider, its speed is approaching the speed of light. In this apocalyptic jousting tournament, the lead proton is not alone. Each group numbers more than 100,000 million. In one of the LHC's four giant underground detector caverns, their two paths converge as their Armageddon approaches. The energies created at collisions in the LHC have never occurred since the Big Bang itself, and some of the particles released have not roamed free since that time. Supernova. But why will the nuclear company take such enormous risks? Because it didn't know its machine had enough energy to make a frozen quark star. CERN had done the wrong calculus, and now after spending 13 billion dollars, they cannot stop their machine. So they sponsor quantum physicists to deny Einstein's theory of mass. One of them thinks he has found an invisible particle that is God. CERN has really done a, a splendid job for the particle physics community, and I'd like to add my congratulations. 
Points? Come on! Yeah. What do you mean, points? How can something have a mass and a charge and be a point? Well, it takes a little, a few muscles in the mind that haven't been worked on. But if you work on them for a while, uh, you can imagine such an object. It's a little bit like uh, Alice in Wonderland. Remember the Chesser cat sitting on the tree, uh, smiling, and Alice is noticing that the cat is disappearing in front of her eyes, and poof, when the cat disappears, the smile is left behind. You remember that? But Higgs couldn't explain how his god attracted mass, since colliding particles repel each other. Then a kid from high school came up with the solution. God is a celebrity, and particles move where they think. His invisible highness is defined upon arrival to his meeting point that God has disappeared. In front of your eyes, it's shrinking. And finally, it poof, shrinks to a point, leaving behind its spin, its charge, its mass. And if it has a smile, leaving behind its smile. That's the idea. A $13 billion idea that Nobel Weinberg called the toilet particle to flush in a vortex of mass of Dr. Einstein as the Earth will be this Christmas. So what is the probability that you, me, and all the people of the Earth died returning to the darkness of the myths of Genesis. Very high. Because the laws of relativity and the scientific method are always right. Since reality exists thanks to those laws. And Mr. Hawkins breaks them all. The law of causality that forbids travel and time. And the experimental method that forbids theories on events never observed. Yet, we have never seen time machines or newborn babies evaporating back into their mother's womb, as Hawking pretends black holes do. The law of hylomorphism that requires all mathematical forms to describe real, material beings. Since as Einstein's best friend Gödel proved, mathematics is just a linguistic mirror of the universe, able to create fictions as images and languages do, unless there is experimental evidence of the events its equations describe. Ockham's razor that makes certain the simplest explanation of reality, which in the case of hylomorphic black holes, is Einstein's frozen quark stars. What comes out of these kinds of calculations is convincing evidence that this theory of quarks and gluons, really do and nothing else, really does account for the vast bulk of the mass of ordinary matter. The mass is the frequency yes. itself. The masses of particles really do correspond to frequencies of stable vibrations in the void. But these are very hard, rigorously tested, battle-worn uh, consequences. So, I mean, fa uh, scientific facts is you know, as, as hard as they get. Uh, Dr. Hawkins, uh, could it be conceived that the infinitely small that is being studied here at the CERN is one and the same as the infinitely large? He's just pressing a switch and the increased reflection from... I the don't stream. understand your question. <laughs> Finally, Hawking's <laughs> theories break the law of certainty, which considers probabilities to be approximations to the truth, caused by errors of human understanding as those Mr. Hawking shows with the scientific method and Mr. Higgs with mass, not by errors of the universe. Because the laws of science are true or false. One plus one is always two, not sometimes. Even if sometimes, we are unable to accept hardcore truths and resort to infinitesimal probabilities to excuse our actions as the nuclear company does. The uncertainty principle will not help you now, Stephen. Hmm? All the quantum fluctuations in the universe will not change the cards in your hand. <laughs> I call. You are bluffing, and you will lose. In the 1920s, a group of young scientists stole the spotlight from Einstein when they came up with an outlandish new way of thinking about physics. Their vision of the universe was so strange, it makes science fiction look tame and it turned Einstein's quest for unification on its head. Unification. Even the most bizarre events have a probability of taking place. There's a certain probability that I will dissolve and simply rematerialize on the other side of that brick wall. 
Now, you may say to yourself, well, well, that's impossible. We've never seen anyone dissolve and rematerialize on the other side of brick walls. But we actually give this problem to our graduate students, to our PhD candidates. We ask them to calculate, using the quantum theory, what is the probability that you will find yourself on the other side of a brick wall? Now, to tell you the truth, you would have to wait longer than the lifetime of the universe for such an event to take place. So you don't have to worry. Your atoms are not going to dissolve, and you're not going to rematerialize on the other side of brick walls. But there is a probability you can calculate for that event. There are some physicists who refuse to accept that the most famous is Albert Einstein. Quantum mechanics, it hardly brings us any closer to the secret of the old one. In any case, I am convinced that he doesn't throw dice. But nuclear physicists like to play games with the god of entropy and death. Depressor, you best. 